What is this? Have I really been gone for so long that this forest has been blocked by a goddamn tumbleweed? And apparently, I've also been gone for so long that my channel died for the third time. Three. It's been three now. Let's see if we can get to four. But for the time being, I feel like a nice simple video would do well for me returning to YouTube after so long. And this time, let's try and make it stick. Let's make it count. And I thought. What better coaster to review of my return to YouTube than the one my channel owes its namesake to Manta at SeaWorld San Diego. Yeah, you were wondering why my channel was named Ray the Coaster Critic when very obviously my name isn't Ray. Yeah, this ride is why. And I find it almost weird how it's taken this long for me to review this coaster even though I think I mentioned it like at least twice a video last time I checked. Like, come on. I, you could not escape this thing if you watched one of my videos back in the day. So, might as well say my actual thoughts on this because I did do a video that mentioned it before, but it was combined with the other Manta. And I also have some new thoughts on the other Manta. So, like... What can you do? And as I previously said, this video will be a sort of celebration of me coming back and also a general review and history of Manta at SeaWorld San Diego. You will also notice that this whole entire video I will not be using my green screen. That's because my green screen is currently blocked by like 50 things because the garage it's in is getting like a very big reshuffling. So at the moment, I can't do that. So let's just say I'm going to get very creative with the next few videos. Because I'm definitely not recording like five videos in one day. I'm, I'm not that insane. Trust me. I'm not. So with all that out of the way, let's get started with this big fat review on Manta at SeaWorld San Diego. Manta at SeaWorld San Diego is a Mock Rides family launch coaster that opened on May 26, 2012 at SeaWorld San Diego. It was tailored as a big refurbishment and expansion of the former Forbidden Cove area of the park, but that's starting to get into the history of the ride, so I should probably save that for later. This Manta is also not to be confused with the other Manta at SeaWorld Orlando, which is a B&M flying coaster that is almost the entire opposite of this ride. And that Manta is also not to be confused with not only this Manta, but the brand new Manta that opened at SeaWorld Abu Dhabi earlier last year. Yeah, you, you can tell that Manta is just another journey to Atlantis with how they just love reusing this name. Now, the amount of information we have on the early stages of Manta are very slim and amount to all that is in this field, also known as absolutely nothing. But 
we do have a few concept art renderings. Those concept art renderings consisting of the main entrance area with the big rock structure and the coaster going around it. A really, really, really well done version of the queue line we would eventually get, which unfortunately would not have an actual flowing river and would not have that really well done station building and all of this greenery. And as you can see here, there's an image of early renderings of the trains, as well as some early renderings of the layout, the station building, the launch building, and the general paths around the area. Oh yeah, when I was searching for some, um concept art for this ride for some reason Google thought I said fan art and dear god it actually exists please explain to me what this is a few news reports do exist of them showcasing the old animations that were originally meant for like SeaWorld showing off Manta. However, I cannot find those news reports, and to my knowledge, they still don't exist on YouTube. Or, got deleted off of YouTube, or I don't know, they just aren't there anymore. So, yeah, we kind of have to deal with that. But I can tell you that the animation was almost certainly made in No Limits 1, and it was crappy as hell. But after all of this was said and done, Manta would start construction in around 2011, and it would go pretty smoothly. Now, again, there was a construction update series that SeaWorld uploaded where there would be this person and she would walk you through what they were doing at the construction site. Like, similar to how Cedar Point's doing their inside look thing with Top Thrill 2. But again, SeaWorld unfortunately took this off their SeaWorld San Diego YouTube channel. Why? I have no goddamn clue and I can't find it anymore, and, uh, yeah. So, we would have some really good coverage of this ride's construction, but nope! Cyril just had to take it down, so that's just wonderful. So, after the ride was built and built and built, testing began. But unfortunately, while they were testing, I don't know what was causing this noise, I don't know how they fixed it, but every single time the ride went around any form of curve, it would make this horrifically loud and screeching noise. So it turns out, even roller coasters have demons hidden inside of them. Interesting. But eventually, on May 26, 2012, Manta finally opened to the public. And it was a fantastic ride. It got rave reviews and helped boost SeaWorld San Diego's attendance for one year. We all know what happened the year after. But it helped boost it for one year. One year. And that's what counts. So yeah, as I sort of said there, Manta was SeaWorld San Diego's last attempt to try and get any attendance back to the park, and then the big whoopsie daisy happened in 2013, and then they had to wait another five years before they got their attendance back. And now they're literally the best performing theme park chain in terms of stocks. Huh. Well, there you go. All you need to do is get in some very big controversy, and then five years later turn around and decide that you're finally going to do something different, and then boom, you suddenly become the best performing in your area. Seems like a pretty easy plan to me. And now, time for our regularly scheduled ad break, brought to you by Ray the Coaster Critic. Hey you, yes you, do you like headaches? Do you like that throbbing pain you get in your head every single time you get an amazing sickness or every single time you talk to someone and you just can't understand why they aren't getting your point? Well, do I have the thing for you. It's called the comment section of every single Manta POV at SeaWorld San Diego. I swear to God, some of these comments genuinely make me want to slam my head into a wall because, oh my God, how many times do people have to realize that these two things are not the same thing? Now, back to our regularly scheduled stupidity. After Manta opened, there wasn't too much ruckus about the ride. Granted, there was the big whoopsie daisies that SeaWorld did in 2013, but other than that, not much really happened. 
at least until the world did a big whoopsie daisies and shut down for two years, in which the park had to reopen in August of 2020, but not as a theme park, as a zoo. Because of the state of California's laws, SeaWorld technically could reopen, but not as a theme park, as just a simple zoo. And then, they kind of just stayed as a zoo, and then they closed, and then they reopened, still as a zoo. But then, the second time they reopened, they started hinting at the fact that they were getting pretty damn close to being able to actually reopen the rides. And it was around this time that people, including me, started noticing that there were test dummies and little social distancing markers showing up in the queue lines and the rides themselves, and blah blah blah, a bunch of other stuff. Manta was one of these rides that had them. But then when the park reopened with the rides in April, Manta didn't reopen. Neither did Journey to Atlantis, but that was because it was getting a whole nother refurbishment of its own. Electric Eel was the only one to reopen. Manta was labeled with a reopening very soon thing under it on the website. Now I was over here thinking, what is with this? But then I proceeded to learn that apparently, while they were testing Manta to make sure that it didn't die while it was sitting there over the whole whoopsie daisy time, a part broke. A very specific part, I don't know what it was, I heard it may have had something to do with the launch, but I couldn't tell you. It was a part that they had to specially get from Mock Rides, who, mind you, is based in Germany. So, the entire time that Manta was closed, SeaWorld was waiting for Mock Rides to give them this very specific part that they needed to reopen the ride. Then they had to test the ride, and then the ride reopened in, I think, April. I do not remember because that was ages ago. So now that we've gone through a brief little look over the history of the ride, now let's look over how it runs. You start by exiting the station building where you then go into a 270 degree projection screen tunnel that likes to work 70% of the time. In this POV, you can see that some of the projectors were on, but the others were off. Sometimes Zero will be bothered to fix it, other times they won't be bothered to fix it. As the music begins and you start rocking back and forth, you can see various rays flying over you as the music gets calmer and then intense and more intense. Continue to rock back and forth and back and forth until the music gets the most intense, a large array starts flying over you, and then you launch out of the tunnel. You reach a max speed of 42 miles an hour, and then you fly down a 50 foot drop, then over into a 90 degree bank turf, and then into another valley, then into a pretty nice airtime pop, and then into another valley, where you then turn into another nice little floater air time pop depending on where you're sitting then to another one and then into a nice little curve into a short little break run and then you go into the second launch launching you back to your top speed then you go into a pretty forceful curve where you then go over some unnecessary launch section and then into another air time hill into a very twisty and almost ejector air time hill then into a few little final turns into a, another nice little turn, and then into a final curve, into the break run. That was Manta, and in my opinion, it is still the best ride at SeaWorld San Diego. Yes, above Electric Eel, Emperor, and obviously Journey to Atlantis, and this is something that they should look into keeping for a very, very long time. And there was Manta at SeaWorld San Diego. In general, this is a amazing family coaster and in my opinion is the best family coaster in California. And I'm qualified to say that. I've been to almost every major park in California. I still have yet to go to Discovery Kingdom and yet I've gone to Cedar Point. Don't ask me how that happened, it just happened. And as you can tell throughout my history on YouTube, this ride really is important to me and this channel, as without it, I also wouldn't have never gotten the name to this channel, Ray the Coaster Critic. So, yeah, there's my review of Manta. I hoped you liked it, because this should be a fitting two-year anniversary video, and hopefully, 
hopefully I can get a consistent video per week upload schedule because next video is going to be Pipeline the Surf Coaster next week on Wednesday, I think. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. But yeah, weekly uploads hopefully coming and hopefully this channel will not be dead and hopefully this channel can stay living for the next year or so at least. So, I was Ray the Coast Critic, you're the viewer, and I'll see you in the future. Goodbye.